Hello and greetings. I'm Dr. Vijay C. Bose from the Asian Orthopedic Institute from Chennai. And today I'll be discussing the design rationale of the monomer revision stem. It's important to know a little bit of the historical perspective. So in the 80s and 90s of the last century, there was a great divide across the Atlantic. On the Western side, in the US and Canada, surgeons were using an extensively coated cobalt foam stem, which was developed by Charlie Young Sr. And later on, of course, was promoted by Charlie Young Jr. On the other side of the Atlantic, we had Heinz Wagner from Germany, who developed the concept of having a fluted taper titanium stem, and the Wagner stem was developed in 1985. So for a few decades, there was a bit of um, controversy as to which was the better of these two philosophies. Now in 2025, it's very clear as to what works and what does not. The non-fluted cylindrical cobalt chrome stems have a very high complication rate. There is uh, quite a significant stress shielding and the proximal bone tends to disappear over time. The most important disadvantage of these cobalt chrome stems is that they break. The incidence of breakage is very high. The third problem with these cobalt chrome stems is that there's no proximal bone that regenerates. And therefore, when there is a void proximally, it tends to lead on to failure in the long term. So because of this high rate of complications, we can safely say that today that the cobalt chrome stems are not the standard of care and one must not use these stems in 2025. The prime example of this stem is the solution stem and then of course others uh, following the same philosophy of a cylindrical cobalt chrome stem. In our institute, the Asian Orthopedic Institute in Chennai, we have revised 16 of these cylindrical cobalt chrome stems that have been done earlier, two fluted tapered titanium stems and they have all done well. Most uh, hip revision surgeons across the world have revised a lot of these cylindrical cobalt chrome two fluted tapered titanium stems. So the secret sauce seems to be these fluted tapered titanium. And today, everyone must use a stem which subscribes to this philosophy. Now, we know that today the gold standard is the fluted tapered titanium stems. And the first generation of this, which was developed in 1985, and this year is the 40th anniversary of the Wagner stem, has done very well. And this has been the work has for revision surgery over, over many decades across the world. And uh, this has got a 40 year legacy and heritage, which is very good. The most important part of this monoblock stem is that there's no risk of breakage. There's no recorded case of a broken Wagner in the whole of English literature. There's also excellent proximal bone that reconstitutes over time, which is very reassuring when we use these stems. But the question to ask today is that, are there any issues with this Wagner stem. There are. The most important issue that we have is that the substance rate is quite high. The second issue that we have is that the dislocation rate is also very high. In the example shown above, I have used a Wagner stem and you can see that it's fairly uh, a good size for the given situation, but in spite of that, it has subsided. On the example given below, I've used a, a dislocating Wagner stem and it's a dislocated. So both these uh, complications are uh, show a higher rate with the Wagner stem. Now we look at literature, the message that we get is very clear. In any long-term study, we find that the incidence of subsidence and the incidence of dislocation is high when we use the Wagner stem. The incidence of subsidence is in the range of about 15 to 20%. And the incidence of dislocation is somewhere in the range of 5 to 10 percent, which are both are very high. Now, the modularity was introduced just to solve these two issues. It's very clear as to how modularity solves these two issues. The first, we achieve a distal rigid fixation independently without worrying about soft shift balance. And then we put the, approx the appropriate uh, proximal segment so that we are able to make the soft shift balance quite independently, and that's how modularity addresses these two issues. An additional benefit of using a modular stem is that we can also increase the diameter of the proximal segment, and therefore this provides some kind of secondary stability, which is an advantage of the modular stem as well. Now, however, there's an in and yang to everything in life, and whenever you introduce modularity, there's a risk of breakage. The risk of breakage especially is very high when there's no proximal bone support. 
resulting on undue stress acting on the junction unload the junction being loaded in quite a significant fashion. We also should keep in mind that model systems are very expensive. The cost is a very important issue in any part of the world and this cannot be ignored as well. There's a very serious major advantage of monoblock stems over modular stems. That is, that one does not need proximal bone support when you use a monoblock stem. Now, this is a landmark paper from Germany. Here, they have used the monoblock Wagner stem in 31 proximal femoral tumors. So the whole of the proximal femur has been excised and a monoblock stem has been inserted. And it's very reassuring to note that in all these 31 patients, there's no uh, recorded case of a stem breakage. Here's a patient of mine. You can see there's complete transection of the femur. I've used a monoblock stem and it's functioned well. So not surprisingly, there's increasing popularity of these fluted taper titanium monoblock stems the world over. And as we said that the first generation monoblock Wagner stem has done well with the 40 year uh, rich legacy. However, there are still five technical issues with this uh, Wagner stem. And therefore, we have developed the second generation monoblock stem, which is the monomod. Now, the monomod has been developed specifically to address these five issues. The issues are there's a low taper angle leading to an increased rate of significant subsidence. There's an increased dislocation subsidence rate due to the inability to achieve soft ship balance and an accurate press fit because of the combined one step surgical technique. There is no scope in the Wagner stem for dialing in the desired version in the absence of lo local landmarks. There's also a lack of secondary stability in weak bone as there's inability to achieve proximal bone support because there's no model acting. The sizes are, at times are too large to fit smaller patients and is particularly true in the Asian uh, continent. Now the first issue that we have with the first generation monoblock is the taper issue. So to understand this, we need to know a little bit of taper science. Now, stems with very low tapers or fully cylinders will have the maximum host bone contact for a given segment of bone. So the lower the taper, more will be the host bone contact. However, less the taper, the more would be the chance of subsidence. So that's what why the Wagner stem has got a higher rate of subsidence because of the low taper angle. So the, the classical uh, first generation has got a higher subsidence rate as its taper angle is only two degrees. Now, if we increase the taper angle more, it certainly become more resistance to subsidence. However, when you increase the taper angle, you'll find that the host bone contact for a given segment is less. Therefore, it needs a longer segment to get adequate fixation. So that you can see there's an in and yang to everything. So the redapt stem is a good example of a high taper angle. It's got a three degree taper angle, but it will have less host bone contact for a given segment. So the monomod has got a taper angle of 2.5 degrees, which we now call as a moderate taper angle. We now believe that this 2.5 degrees moderate taper angle is the sweet spot between these two uh, low taper angle and high taper angle. It's very uh, reassuring to note that uh, the monomod was the first stem with the 2.5 uh, taper angle. And now many stems across the world have copied this uh, 2.5 taper angle. And this is very reassuring. Now, the second issue that we have with the uh, Wagner is that it's inability to achieve these two goals. So the primary goal of revision surgery is two. The first one is to achieve soft tissue balance proximally, which we call as hip, hip joint stability. The second is to achieve rigid distal fixation, which we call as stem stability. So basically, when we are doing a revision hip on the stem side, we want to get hip joint stability and stem stability. So the first generation monoblock Wagner tries to achieve these steps through a single surgical step. This is sometimes too big to bite and therefore that frequently leads to compromise of one goal or the other. So either we compromise the hip joint stability, the soft tissue balance, or we compromise the stem stability distally leading to subsidence. So as we discussed earlier, the modern revision stem addresses this concern because we achieve rigid distal stability without worrying about soft tissue balance. We allow the stem to seat wherever it wants to. 
and then we add proximal portions to make to get our soft tissue stability and that's how the model stems addresses this concern now the monomod stem is a monoblock stem like the wagner however the one surgical step is now broken into two surgical steps so that each of these goals can be achieved independently in the first one we achieve a soft tissue balance proximally by using the black head markings which corresponds to the head of the prosthesis and then we use the colored markings which corresponds to the shoulder of the prosthesis and we use this to get rigid distal fixation so the two goals are achieved in independent steps just like the modular stems so although monomod is a monoblock stem it has got features of the modular stem the next issue is the need for versional accuracy in revision femoral stems and the wagner does not have any provisions for this and therefore it has a higher dislocation rate and the monomod we've devised the monomod inserter with a version guiding slots of 0 10 20 and 30 degrees of functional lower limb version this helps us to get the lower limb version very accurately and one has to align this version guide to the tibia and it give you your desired version for that particular case that is 0 or 10 or 20 or 30 or anywhere in between and this is referred to as the functional lower limb version now <clears throat> functional lower limb version is not given the importance it deserves now we must keep in mind that the hip biomechanics influenced by two factors one is the spine from above but we talk a lot about spinal pelvic parameters and one from below which is the lower limb version so we uh, we talk extensively about getting the socket right using various spinal pelvic parameters but we tend to ignore the distal which is equally important which is the functional lower limb version so you need to have a device that will give you a very accurate functional lower limb version otherwise all the accuracy that you get by using any spinal pelvic uh, parameter does not have any meaning unless you tackle the lower limb version as well we have published this uh, as a part of our paper of our 3d balancing and this functional lower limb version is as important as spinal pelvic parameters for the socket side the first generation wagner stem monoblock does not have uh, accuracy as far as offset goes now the trials in this uh, wagner stem are limited and therefore the trials do not match the real implant in terms of offset however in the monomod we have what's known as the variable coupling technology so in this what happens is that for some sizes the proximal segment mates symmetrically or concentrically with the distal segment for other sizes it progressively mates in an eccentric fashion and therefore we find that the trial has the exact offset of the real implant the advantage of this is that it makes soft tissue balance very 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 accurate the next issue is about secondary protection against subsidence now some kind of secondary protection is needed when the bone quality is very poor the patient can be intrinsically very osteoporotic or sometimes in a multiply revised femur the bone quality is so bad that one will need secondary protection against subsidence the wagner has got no provision to provide secondary stability against subsidence which is available only in modular stems and not in monoblock stems however the monomod although it's a monoblock stem we still have some provision for providing secondary stability now if the bone quality is very poor then we can use these dedicated instruments to prepare the proximal femur and insert these proximal femoral augment just like how you do on the socket reconstruction in a deficient stablum we can uh, insert these augments which are not custom made but is off the shelf sizes just like astabra augments and one can prepare the proximal femoral bone insert these augments and then use a screw to unitize these augments to the uh, stem the monomod stem this provides secondary stability against the subsidence so though the monomod is a monoblock stem it has got some features of the modular stem and this is very true when it comes to giving secondary protection against subsidence The next issue is of uh, the sizing issue. Now the Wagner diameter starts at 14, but 
Now, in many populations of the world, especially in Asia, we find that many patients uh, have very small bones and very small bone diameter. So in these populations, we frequently run into problems where even the smaller size of the Wagner is not able to fit the patient. This is an Asian problem, but it can present in any part of the world. The monomod starts with 12 dia, and therefore patients who have narrow diameter and are very small, the monomod can address uh, this uh, small bone size issue very well. The proof of the pudding is, of course, in eating it. So it's important to know how the monomod has performed. So the monomod was introduced in uh, 2022, and over the last three years, over 3,000 uh, monomods have been used by surgeons in many parts of the world. And it's very reassuring to note that there's been no documented case of any stem breakage. Now, how the stem performs over long term would depend on how well there is a harmonious relationship between the stem and the proximal femur. So here is a patient of mine. You can see a large lateral defect. Now, after I've used the monomod in this uh, situation, and after uh, two months, you can see that uh, there is some bone formation on the void on the lateral side. After further two months, you can find that the void is uh, getting filled up even more, and there's more bone formation. And at six months, you can see that the entire void is now filled up. If you see a magnified view, you can see that it's complete reconstitution on the lateral side in this uh, monomod reconstruction. Now, bone formation on the lateral side is not seen consistently with the Wagner. With the Wagner, one sees consistently bone formation on the medial side. And the, the reliable bone formation on the lateral side of the monomod has probably has something to do with its uh, taper. Now, new bone formation on the lateral side is the best index indicative of a harmonious relationship between bone and implant in the upper femur, and this would translate into long-term long success. So, in summary, the first-generation monoblock stem, the Wagner stem, has done good service over the last four decades since it was introduced in 1985. It has got some limitations which can lead to problems uh, in specific situations. So the second generation monoblock was developed in 2022 in India to address this problem specifically. So to summarize, the monomod is a second generation fluted taper titanium stem. It addresses specifically the limitations of the first generation monoblock stem, that's the Wagner stem. It is a monoblock stem like the Wagner, but incorporates some key advantages of modular stem. And therefore, it gets its name mono plus mod, the monomod stem. Thank you.